Welcome back to what it's really like to be an entrepreneur. I'm Vincent Lancey, speaker and author of the book, Left for Dead, A Story of Redemption. Want to know what it's really like to be an entrepreneur? Well, you came to the right place. Whether you're already an entrepreneur or looking to start your journey tomorrow or just someone who needs a little extra motivation to get through the day, this is the perfect podcast for you. This is the place where you will learn exactly what it's like in the world of entrepreneurship and hear authentic stories of entrepreneurs grinding on each episode. My goal for this podcast is to help you realize that giving up is never an option. If you missed the last episode, be sure to tune in after you finish up today. Before I introduce my guest, I'll share another entrepreneurial story to inspire you all. I'll share the story of Richard Branson today. And here's a few highlights I jotted down while reading his story. And to be honest with you all listening in, I didn't know much about his deep, deep background, just kind of see his successes. I found out he dropped out of school at only 16 years old to begin his first entrepreneurial opportunity and starting a magazine named Student. This is where he made quick money selling advertisements to local businesses. He soon began selling mail records to existing clientele, and then you fast forward less than a year later, this popular idea was now enabling him to open up his own record label and studio called, you guessed it, Virgin Records. Now we'll fast forward less than only one decade. He was a 23-year-old millionaire with Virgin Records, which is also known as the Virgin Megastore. Hey, Vinny, what do you like best about Richard's story? Um. He never gave up, you know, that's how most of these, you know, millionaires, billionaires did it. They never gave up. They believed in themselves. And as long as you believe in yourself, anything's possible. Absolutely. That voice you all just heard is the sound of today's guest. We went to high school back in the day and I had a friend reach out and tag him in a post on my Instagram at your favorite morning podcast said, Vin, I got someone good for your show. Turns out his name's Vin too. And he sustained his startup now for over five years and turned it into a reputable business. I can't wait to dive in and give you all the details. Allow me to introduce another entrepreneur and Vincent DiRizzo. Vin, thanks for coming on today. My pleasure. Please uh, give a little bit of a preview of your story before we hop into the questions and then end up what you're working on today. So yeah, I started the business um, with uh, two other partners um, and within the first two to three years, uh, it was actually an um, MMA gym and my partner now and I, we realized that our other partner was stealing from us and we had to do something. Um, actually, I was on the verge of leaving because uh, I knew that the guy was stealing. So basically I said to my partner, listen, if you're willing to stay on, I'm staying on, I'll stay on and we'll do this together. So we got rid of him. Uh, it was actually pretty funny. We, uh, we had a meeting with my attorney thinking that I was you know, leaving when totally we, I called my attorney like two weeks before and I said, listen, the meeting's going to be different. We're going to plan a stunt and we're going to get rid of him. And here's all the facts. Here's all the evidence. I have everything. He actually signed, he forged my name on documents. Um, so when we went into the meeting, he was like, what? He was shocked. He didn't know what to do. And it was actually, it was comical. It was very funny. He didn't think he was going to get caught. Denying it, denying it, denying it. No, no. The guy's a, you know, actually he's in jail now. So for other, you know, fraud stuff, you know, little did we know that we're dealing with a professional scam artist. Um, How so far back do you go with this guy? He used to be my MMA coach. So when I started MMA at 21, 2021, um, I looked up to him, you know, I was 300 pounds. He helped me drop down to, you know, 220. So he's my mentor. So when he's like, hey, do you want to open up a gym? I didn't know what the hell, you know, I never went to school for business. I never went, I only went to school for uh, liberal arts because I want to become a cop. So my mom was an accountant. I showed her the business plan and she's like, you need to be a part of this. And that's kind of how it started, you know, and then I got the money and opened it up and realized that once we got rid of him, I said to my partner, Northport is not an MMA town, you know, we're not going to be able to sustain this in this town. We have to do something different. So the deli next to us went out and I said to my landlord, Hey, we want to knock the walls down and become a bigger gym, a full out gym um, and have classes downstairs. So we got investors and that's what we did. And now actually as of like March, maybe April, May, I got to look at my numbers, but uh, we'll be 100% debt free. Congratulations, so it, man. It's an accomplishment. Uh, yeah, it'll be a huge, 
weight off my shoulders, weight off his shoulders, and now we'll be 100% profitable. It's time to make some money. Well, your hard work's paying off, man. I'm great to hear that you turned a negative into a positive. And I'm really looking forward to sharing your story with our listeners. It's time for the big five, Vin. On each episode, my guests and I go over these five questions to help the listeners learn what it's really like to be an entrepreneur. You ready to rock and roll? Do it. When did you first realize that you weren't happy with what you were doing or you needed some kind of a change to become an entrepreneur? I mean, nothing really happened in my life where I wasn't happy. Um, my pursuit to becoming a cop was still, you know, the goal. Um, but I did need a backup plan because everyone that told me said, listen, you need a backup plan. If this doesn't work out, what are you going to do? You know, you invested your college, you know, your associates on just becoming a cop. You need to do something. So I kind of said, you know what, let me do this. Um, it kind of fell in my lap. And if while I'm doing this, let me still pursue becoming a cop. And if the cop, you know, comes in, comes my way, then I can decide, do I want to continue doing this or become a cop? And sure enough, you know, once I got rid of my partner, I said, you know, I'm happy where I'm at. I don't need to become a cop. That's great, man. It really is incredible how something so horrible happened. You were ready to back out and you said, we're just going to take it by the horns. Yeah. I mean, literally I was, I had the interviews to move down. One of my clients, um, he's a high executive for a company called MSC and their uh, uh, home base is in North Carolina. So I had interviews to move down to North Carolina, the whole nine. Um, and I looked at my partner and I said, listen, I don't want to leave. Because I liked him and said, I'm not happy. But I knew what was going on and I didn't want to be a part of it. And I said, I'm willing to stay. I love what we do. But you need to be on board with me. If you're with him, then I'm out. If you're not with him and you're with me, let's do this together. And he said, I'm with you. And it's been, you know, history ever since. Glad to hear it, man. If you had to pick one or two difficult parts of being an entrepreneur on that laundry list of items, what would you say the two most difficult parts are? So I would have to say client relations, customer relations. Get into um, it. Great example. It literally just happened two days ago, three days ago. Um, and I say to my partner all the time, you cannot make the, everybody happy, no matter what business it is, whether it's employees, clients, no matter what, you're not going to make everybody happy. Someone's going to be upset about something. So one of my instructors, their, uh, their class is not doing well. And unfortunately, I had to make a decision. And cutting things is not easy. That's something I don't want to do. But, you know, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, we, my partner and I, we have to make decisions. Um, and I said to my instructor, I said, listen, we're going to cut two of your classes. And as the last class was about, you know, just finished, I'm sitting in my office, literally ready about to leave. And four of my members come into my office and just literally was just yelling at me. And it was like, why are you taking this away? Do you like this? Da, da, da. And I said, I understand you like it, but the business is losing money. And I am not in the business to lose money. I'm in the business to make money. And I've tried making this particular class grow, but it's just not growing. Um, unless you guys can somehow fix it within a month, I have to get rid of it. So we came to an agreement that we're going to give the class one more time and they're going to promote it or one more month and they're going to promote it as best as they can and try to get new members in the door. Um, because it is the only class that doesn't do well in our gym what is the type um, of class is it it's a body sculpting class so it's it's more it's a tough class but it's not intense like my other classes like i have kickboxing and i have circuit hit classes so it's more you know controlled versus other classes is more intense so now i don't know if it's the instructor i don't know if it's just the style of the class but it's just still not working so the hardest part, and I know, I know it's impossible, but is to keep clientele, keep the consumers happy. Um, and there's nights where I literally stress over, 
over it, be like, all right, I know if I drop this, this group is going to be upset. If I drop this, this group is going to be upset. So keeping them, especially when you have two to 300 members, like I do, I mean, box gyms, a lot of these box gyms versus something like me, they have a specific model. So everyone knows what the model is going into that place. Me, it's very close knit. I try to keep everybody, you know, engaged and on, you know, involved with everything. So for me, it's very hard to try to keep everybody happy. It's a great example. I've only had one other person use something similar. I'm not sure you're a Norfolk guy. Sasha Adriano owns the whale's tail down there in the Lodovico. He said, he's like, I've lost sleep at nights because I was scared that some people didn't have a good experience. But then eventually I said, I'm doing the best I can. And I, that's just, I'm doing the best I can. And that's what I explained to them. I said, listen, I'm doing the best I can. You know, <clears throat> I'm very, you know, and they said, well, you know, you, you promote your classes. And I said, yes, you're right. Because I'm in my classes. I, I'm literally in there right now, t- you know, taking videos of what's going on. I can't stop personal training, t- training somebody that's paying me X amount of dollars to go downstairs and videotape you girls because that, you know, that's not fair to my clients. They're paying their time. They're paying me to be, you know, with them. Absolutely. So, you know, it's very hard, you know, to keep them happy. And I do, I literally try to do the best I can. Sure. Give me one more, Vin. So we got maintaining good clientele relationships. What's one more hard part for our listeners? You know, in my type of business, the hardest part is keeping up with the fitness world. Okay. Um, Fitness is always changing. And when I named, when I changed Northport MMA to Revolution, I changed it to Revolution for a reason. Because the fitness world is always revolving. It's always, something's revolutionizing. So I want to keep, use that name because I want to always continue to change. Always keep up with the times. Um, a lot of these other gyms, you know, they stick to one this and, you know, stick to this type of class or this type of format. And eventually it's going to get dull Absolutely. because same thing over and over and over. And as trainers, we tell clients all the time, do not, do not stay in a routine because when you're in a routine, then your body is going to sustain and it's never going to change. Mm-hmm. So we, as a, you know, as gym, we try to change the game every single time um one of my my partner he literally just came out with a awesome idea and it started yesterday um and i'm hoping it blows up like we think it's going to but he created a, a class called gamers fitness okay and what it is to try to engage all the kids that play video games to come out of their house and work out wow I think you got so. There, man. It's a circuit style class, and that he got a bunch of VR systems. And one of the one of the stations is playing VRs, but everything else is exercising. And throughout our TVs in our classroom area, you have YouTube streaming going on, and the whole entire time you're talking about you know certain games. So every class he has a different topic. Hey guys, we're going to talk about this. You know, tomorrow we'll talk about that and get them engaged and get these kids that literally, I mean, when they're on their headset, they're in a different community anyway. They're in the video game community. The only problem is, for the most part, they don't see each other. Now they can see each other. They can be like, oh, you know, meet each other here and come take classes and then be like, hey, I'll meet you, you know, I'll talk to you in a few on the, you know, Sony. I'm not a video gamer, I'm an athlete. So this is like a new world for me, Um, but, it's something, again, it, it, we're revolutionizing. We're changing the game. We're changing the fitness world. We're, we're always coming up with new ideas. Hey, Vin, I'll tell you, man, I, at the end of the show, I'm going to share all your information with everybody, but that's something you got to keep me posted on. I'll help you uh, blast that because I think that can, that can take off. I think so, too. It's just it's very unique. And, you know, in every business, if you don't change, you're going to eventually be a lagger. You're going to fall behind. If something works now, it cannot sustain forever. Everything, all exactly. things that go up, they go yeah. down. And that's why, like, you know, our classes, you know, we don't have the typical classes. We have nothing but unique classes that have never been done before. Even our adult classes, we have 
you know, a class that's called TCK. It's TRX core and kettlebell. Usually you just have TRX classes, but there's no classes out there that are just kettlebell. So I combined a class like that. And then I also combined a class where it's kickboxing and hit. And it's, you know, two groups. One group's on the kickboxing bags. One group is in the circuit area. And they switch after nine minutes. And I research, research, research. There are no classes that out there like this. So all our classes in that we offer are nothing but unique. And again, it, it shows who we are. We're, we're revolutionizing the game. Well, you're providing value to the consumer by being unique like that. So I think you have something there with all those ideas. Pretty impressed, man. I'm glad, I'm glad I have you on. I'm learning a lot. What would you say yeah. one of your greatest failures is? And what did it teach you? <laughs> That's easy. Uh, oh, I, used to have, I used to have spin in my gym. <laughs> I thought it was going to do great. Um, and well, Like the bicycle, the little spin bikes? Yeah, spin. And let me tell you, it was probably the biggest failure ever. Biggest headache of my life. Um, I never realized how women can get fight over certain things. Um, and if they ever hear this, I'm sorry, but you know, they were children, they were childish. They literally fought over bikes and said, That's my bike, that's my bike, that's my bike. Oh no. And say, I'm tired of hearing this is my bike, this is my bike, this is my bike. I was like, as an owner, I shouldn't have to talk to you guys like this. I was like, but at the end of the day, guess what, ladies? These are my bikes. I am the owner of these bikes. Yeah. So I, you know, eventually we got rid of it. Um, it was, it killed. We used space that just was not being used. Literally, we had uh, we used downstairs in our basement as classroom areas. So we had a whole classroom dedicated to spin. And out of the week, I think six hours out of the week, it was being utilized. And only out of those six, three of those hours, maybe four, the class was packed. So two of the hours, it wasn't even packed. So I finally said to my partner, Chris, and I said, listen, we're getting rid of it. We're selling the bikes. We're getting rid of it. We're going to knock down the walls. We're going to put a turf in. And I'm starting to build as a strength and conditioning coach around town. I was like, I need to focus on my athletes. I need to start building something that, you know, athletes can come. And my athletes program has been growing. It's been, it's going more for personal training, more than the classes, but it's little by little by little by little growing. And now my gamers, the gamers kids use the same mat. So, and my gym members come downstairs all the time and utilize downstairs more than they've ever had. So me realizing that, you know, one thing didn't work doesn't mean another thing won't. Absolutely. And I tell my clients, I tell my siblings, accept failure. Only, only as negative as failure is, uh, as it is, a positive is going to come out of it because you just learned a valuable lesson. And to me, valuable lessons are more important than negatives. Absolutely, so, man. You're saying great stuff. I love it. When I was dating a girl, she had like a, her own little uh, thing, um, but she never wanted to push forward because she was afraid. She was afraid she would fail. And I would always say to her all the time, don't be afraid to fail. Something new is going to happen. Something's going to open up. You can learn you from fail. it. Absolutely. You're only going to learn from it. So and even not going to business school, Vin, you know, you saw the, in a sense, the opportunity cost of what you're missing by having these bikes. If you keep these bikes, what could you do without those bikes, let alone the money? If you could pick to have a conversation and learn from any entrepreneur, dead or alive, who are we choosing? What are you talking about? I thought about this the other day. Bezos. I would talk to him because he started something small, something as literally just wanted to sell books online to the biggest conglomerate ever. And again, I would like to know what his failures were that he realized that he needed to change in order to make it as big as it is. And that goes for all, you know, all CEOs. I would like to know what their failures were, not necessarily what made, you know, what did well. We all know what did well, but what were the failures that led up to that process? Because they all failed at something. It didn't just happen overnight.
Yeah, so, I mean, you could see that with a lot of business. People look at you, they see this gym. They see the gym. They don't see what's going on behind the gym, what's led up to this gym, the story you shared to open up the program today of having, your, having everything st- you know, robbed from you and almost having to call it quits. No one sees that. They just see the 200 clients, 300 clients now. So you're very right about that, man. Where do you see yourself in your entrepreneurial endeavors, whether it's just this or something new? We're going to look into the future. We'll do one year, and then we're going to look at five years, man. One year, what do you want to see? One year, I want to definitely start looking into expanding the gym again um, and making it bigger um, and completely knocking out, you know, the Gold's Gym and Platinum Fitness around here. You know, those are our competitors as far as people coming in and using the gym. So I want to hopefully in a year start looking into that because, like I said, we'll be done uh, debt-free and I can start, you know, focusing on that. Absolutely. Let's look a little further now. Five years. You, got, you said a lot of good stuff today. This brand's got to be a little bigger than that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Trust me, I'm already like 20 years. Um, right, five, sure. year, five years, um, I'm hoping by, you know, after this one-year plan, I'll have the perfect model to open up uh, two more locations and then uh, franchise it. Uh, I have a lot of people that are in the franchise world. Um, they keep talking. They're always in my ear saying, let's do it, let's do it. And I said, I'm not ready. I'm not ready to do it's it. your baby. I'm, you can't let go of your baby yeah, just yet. I, gotta, I have to make sure it's perfect and it's not perfect yet. I, you know, when I have, when I make, when the gym is making 60, 70,000 a month um, just on membership, then I know it's perfect. Until <laughs> then, I, I got to keep growing and get, it, and get it there. I was like, once, uh, I said to him, once I get there, trust me, all these franchises will be, you know, I, uh, what's the word? Oscillate. Oscillate. Because they won't be able to compare to what I have. Absolutely. I'm, I'm trying looking to forward to seeing all that, man. You got a great work I'm ethic. Trying. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much, man, for coming on. I know our listeners see the value in your episode today. I personally enjoyed how you talked about when I asked you about your failures. It's something I always say it was a lesson learned where what happened my action was I either sit and sulk or you turn something bad to something good. And you have that same mentality. So I'm real glad we linked up for the show. This is now it's time for the last word, Vin. Is there something you want to share with our listeners today that we didn't get to touch on yet? Um, you know, again, I can't stress it enough. Um, never give up, never fail, uh, ex- accept failure because it's only going to make you better. Um, and that's, like I said, I, I stress that with my members, stress that with my family. Uh, my family and I have hit rock bottom multiple times and on the rock that keeps you know getting us there you know the building the building block to get us to where we want to be um and it's because i take my valuable you know i take my failures or you know the heartaches that we went through and i use them to my advantage so never give up always believe in yourself if you truly believe you have something run with it and don't look back that's great, Ben. Can you please go ahead and share your social media, your website, or ways for our listeners to either get in touch with you for your services, follow your journey, all that good stuff? Yeah. So my uh, revolu- it's Revolution Fitness One is our Instagram. Uh, Revolution Fitness is our uh, Facebook, and RevolutionFitnessGyms.com is our website. And I put gyms there specifically because I plan on having multiple gyms. So I already made the website for the future. True time. entrepreneur right there, man. Everybody make sure you check out Revolution One on IG, Revolution Fitness on Facebook, and RevolutionFitnessGyms.com and check it out. Definitely go check out that gym if you're in the New York area. Remember to follow the show on Instagram at your favorite morning podcast and on Facebook as well. I'm on Twitter at Podcast by Lancey and my handles are at Vincent A. Lancey on all social media and YouTube. My website is VincentALancey.com and make sure you check out my book, Left for Dead, A Story of Redemption on Amazon now. Be sure to DM me or email me and let me know what you think. If you enjoyed today's episode, please continue listening and rate what it's really like to be an entrepreneur five stars. I work very hard to find value delivering stories for you on each episode. As always, I'll close out the show and follow the last word with a quote that inspired me. And I know it will for you too. This one's from one of the co-founders of Mindtree, Sabroto Bakshi. Selling is not a pushy, winner-takes-all macho act. It's an empathy-led, process-driven, and knowledge-intensive discipline. Because in the end, people buy from people. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you all in the next episode of What It's Really Like to Be an Entrepreneur.